everybody. You're listening to Turtle Island News with Tracy Kennedy. Okay, I need coffee. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Today is almost July. Can you believe that? You're listening on Turtle Island News. Info, Revolution Radio, Studio 8, The Awake Radio Group, Wolf Spirit Radio, and People for the People. The news today. Well, Friday, I stepped in for Chief Charles Tudor. In the opening of my talk there, as some may have heard, and you can get that in my archives, again, info. I commented on the Confederate flag, Confederate, and the racist attitudes it is associated with. I chose not to, well, not only to write about it, but to do so in a brash, in-your-face matter in which races so frequently themselves like to employ. A sort of social experiment, if you will, which was inspired by watching news interviews with the typical down-home good old boys from the Deep South, explaining how they aren't racist, but rather very proud of the Southern heritage and values course, and independence, which people obviously have no concept of. I'm very aware, going in, that no matter what I say or how I say it, I was in for some crisp feedback, because the first thing racists do when confronted with the ugliness of their hate is attempt to change the focus away from that by any means possible. The easy thing would have been to keep my mouth shut, as some suggested, and to avoid the nastiness that was going to follow. But you see, not my way. And the primary tactic of distraction employed by racists even my fellow radio hosts who just seem to think they can get away with that shit. Well, <laughs> it's a tactic used successfully, but only by infants and children. Make enough unpleasant noise long enough and you'll get your way. And if you make it a lifestyle, pretty soon. Everyone will avoid you like they do rattlesnakes. It tends to work quite a while if you don't mind being a pariah. Now, how do we get here? Where we're living right now, it doesn't matter what country you're in. This entire planet, other than a very few limited peoples that have really declared themselves sovereign, like the North Koreans, bless their hearts, some of the un uncontacted tribes that are uncontacted, not because we haven't found them, but because they don't want to. Everyone else is westernized, right down to the uniforms with the shiny buttons and the cross-dressing pedophilic priests. How did we get here? Because, you know, you got to do some deep mind control to take a man and a woman who are hardwired to be parents to become killers and racists. 
you have to go in really deep because there's no parent who wants their child to have to grow up in that. So they, of course, would not be treating people less than themselves. Treating people like they are some group better than everyone else. This is deep. This goes back to the white brotherhood in every country. Maybe I should say a disclaimer. Of course, the opinions are my own, and I'm not going to talk about, though I'm going to be talking about groups here, I am not going to be talking about all Germans, all Russians, all Americans, all Canadians, all Jews, all Christians, all Catholics, because there is no all. There is a very few group of families who are somewhat large in number. If you look at the list of names for what royals and nobility are, you'll find there's quite a few of them. But in general, this small group, mostly from Europe, not entirely, but mostly, the motherland, has affected this entire planet. What happened in Prussia, Germany, could not have happened if the racist seeds were not planted here. We are in the Kali Yuga of the male, of the patriarch, of the unfortunately not the divine male. As a matter of fact, the last signs we saw of the last divine males in an army was, and I announced it, World War I, which was the most dangerous time on this planet. Actually, between 1800 and now, but 1800 and 1920, this entire planet changed. It was the most dangerous time on this planet and the one that led to the mind control that the United States was chosen specifically to put forth in the world. Didn't start here, but the seeds of this were always here. A country that allows slavery has no heart. And I realize, you know, people look at the Bible and they tell me about this. They look at the Old Testament and they think, you know, my God was tough. He was strong. He said things like, kill them to the last cow. And I realize that. I realize when you look at your country and you think, you know what, we came over here, we came, we saw, we conquered, we kicked butt, we are strong, we are powerful. I realize most people don't know how we got here. At this dangerous time, when the oligarchs decided the kings, the queens. Well, maybe I have to go back a little bit. But when they decided that they wanted to own everything. I don't know. May, maybe it's something about world leader. Maybe it's once you own a certain amount of gold, you lose your damn mind. Because it's not the first time there's been the idea of a one world order or one leader trying to rule them all. We had Alexander. We could go back to Samaria for this. The Enlightenment Age. When a few of the Brotherhood found all of the knowledge on the planet, decided to keep, them, keep it for themselves. When the Queen set out ships, Queen of England, all over the world. There was one called Challenger 
who went from island to island. They met people. Of course, they said they would come back. They did give some things. They also slaughtered and tortured, killed birds randomly. What this was about, finding things in nature, the secret key. And that's also very important because the elements of what's going on here are not just, we can't just look at things one way. Everything is both good and bad, left and right, male and female, up and down. This is the as above, so below. All of the symbols you see used all over the world came from this Challenger expedition for the most part other than the obvious ones that came from plants that people saw. Nature and our biosphere is what is under attack right now. To the point where It's very, very close now whether or not we will have oxygen to last for the next 10 years. Cities, as a matter of fact, right now do not have enough oxygen for your brain to work properly. So you can't. You can't think there. The police mobilized because of a mass murder. Very silent yesterday morning. Thirty dolphins viciously slaughtered in one hour at a beach. Havana Sat Vidoy Island. Police mobilized quickly to block off a tunnel to an island to set up a restricted zone to keep people away from the killers as the blood colored the water. Deep red screams of the dying dolphins, smarter than you, by the way, echoed across the beach, laughing and cheering as the whalers splattered themselves with hot blood in a perverse orgy of sadistic lust. These islands Faro, F-A-R-O-E, continue to encourage the barbarity, the slaughter of dolphins. And it appears that many people in that island are so traditionally or morally bankrupt that they can only identify with a bloody, ritualized culture of sadistic slaughter. As if to proclaim to the entire world that they require blood sacrifices to illustrate their lack of complete empathy, morality, and it is the way of spitting in the face of common human decency. Deliberate, prideful, infliction of suffering and death on innocent, intelligent, self-aware, socially complex, sentient beings with the power and the force of the kingdom of Denmark defending their little backward vassal entity. In the islands of sheep, the whalers are intent to cowardly continue killing. Believe that they have God on their side. Gut, mit, us, gut. This isn't God we trust. It is gut. It is good. The oldest religions we have have a very similar symbol. A cross, but not one that looks like a sword stuck in the ground. Center, usually with swastika looking bent arms. Circular. A wheel like the medicine wheel. The symbol that looks like wind. It is the four elements. 
earth, wind, water, fire, with a center point, a dot. It is a symbol of humanity. In the beginning, we knew we were powerful. Then something happened. Akain, earliest name. Queen, king, Cain, a ruler. One God, the God. So that when people are suffering the most, they fall on their knees and say, God saved me from this. God saved you. No, you saved you from this. But we have stopped giving praise to the earth, to nature. Do you wonder why they show aliens in a pod like a seed coming out? And that coming out of that seed pod is the alien? That's how we start. That's how everything on this planet starts. They were too afraid of that. They are trying to kill that. And they certainly don't want you knowing that you are that. You can find out everything you need to know about yourself by looking to nature. I'm not going all Gaia-y on you. I am not going, oh, let's, you know, love and light and Archangel Michael. And No, I'm not. Start with you first. But they went from that to a king to a ruling class where there had to be slaves. So they just ruled by the stick, by the cane, by beatings. All slaves. You can't pull yourself together when you're a slave. You cannot have higher thinking when you're a slave. It tears holes in you. All you want to do is go back home and you know that there was another place that was better and it rips you into shreds. And the slavery has not stopped. Not here, not anywhere. It's just changed. These people, slaves, still ongoing, of course, torture to the point that you cannot regain your soul. Freedom isn't even enough. You are always under the whip. You treat your children under a whip. But that was not enough. It was not enough for them. It's never going to be enough for them. So they changed their they changed their strategy. And mental slavery now is the worst form of slavery. It gives you the illusion of freedom, makes you trust, love, and defend your oppressor. Well making an enemy of those that are trying to free you or open your eyes, but your eyes can't be opened. Let's not Let's not um, get this wrong. We need to get this right. So, what happened? World War I. The controllers who had at this point westernized a very broad section of the earth. Prussia lost the war against Napoleon. Do you know why? Because the men fighting said no, put down their guns, and turned away. They stopped fighting. Of course the rulers wanted them to continue killing, of course. But this is, this is the key. This is the horcrux, if you will. This is the last sign of humanity in men that are fighters. They said no and put their guns down and left. The ruling elite were trying to take 
everything. And it wasn't working. Now, know this programming isn't new. It's very far from new. We can go back to Samaria for this. There's a reason that men who think they are learned usually quote Sun Tzu to you. This is about mind control. This is about domination. This is about how to make people do what you say. How to take over. It is about control and supremacy. Any civilization that starts off with this supremacy in its background is bound to fail. It will always be sick. It will always be wrong. Period. Until that mindset is gone, there is no hope. That's why more and more people, most of us, I'm sure, not all of us, are stepping away from the go team. Yay, I'm American. Yay, I'm Canadian. Yay, I'm Brazilian thing. Be human or die. Because it's at that point. We know that now. It's at that point. And our brothers and sisters have been abused. And it is not the Germans' fault. You know, something started there. Because they refused to fight. They didn't want to die, surprisingly enough. This is survival of the fittest now. This is why you will never, ever... In any of the civilizations of anyone who's listening to me right now, I'm sure, get a good leader. Your leaders have to be ruthless. They need to be psychopaths. They need to be bloodthirsty. Because we have warlords. We have tax lords. We have fiefdoms. We are now in an empire. ruled by mind control. The end of NICE has happened. 1800, 1919, the complete supremacy system, the German mind control machine. And it started, of course, with the usual suspects. But first in Germany, which, by the way, is why our German brothers and sisters fell so deeply for what happened to them. Now it's easy to become racist to them and they're so mean and these people are so wrong and why did they do this and how could they kill all these people the same way we are killing all these people now. It just started with them and they were the bravest of the brave and were totally defeated, totally used, totally beaten. School. And we've taken that word, again, from our Prussian brothers and sisters. It was about how to read a book, how to study. They decided that children were a blank slate. And we needed to write on them. An important part of the Prussian system, which became the educational system for the entire planet, was that it defined for the child what was to be learned, what was to be thought about, how long to think about it, and when a child was to think of something else. Basically, it is a system of complete thought control. It establishes a hole in the psyche. And it was made for the German elite that would rather manifest itself into what we now refer to as mind control. It was so that you could be trained to do what the king wanted. That's how your Bible was written. 
That's why in the old pictures of the meeting at Nicaea, everyone points out the Pope. No one notices the king there with the book pointing to it. What's going in, what's going out, so the slaves will do what they're told. At this point it was all slavery, so it was all stick. Now, yeah, some must have called the cops. We're talking about a group of people here that have more than you can imagine. More than you ever will. You know, we ask for help on our shows. And I realize there's a lot of people out there that uh, have millions of dollars, billions of dollars. They're not going to help you. They never will. Know that. And we do appreciate all your help. But it's not people who are wealthy helping us here. It's people with a little bit. It's people who sit in the house. They don't go to a store. They don't go and buy you go boss. They call someone to come in, measure them in the finest materials, finest artists. They wear it once. They have it put in a box after. They never wear it again. That's not you. That is not me. And you will never be that. You will never be those people. I don't care how much you use your positive thought. You will never be that. So know that when you're talking about who and what the elite are, this is a plan that is so perfect. This is why you are taught by the bell. This is why you have periods. This is why, okay, at this time you have math. At this time you have English. At this time you have whatever. This time you will work out, and that's why they stop that. This time you will have music, and that's why they stop that. Only 5% of any, what should we call it, country? Go to a real school with real learning. Everything else is set into a three-tier system. High, middle, base. This public school. Where, you know, they're basically not telling you even the real meanings of parts of a word. They're telling you a concept when you're in the lowest level that's maybe a sentence or a paragraph and it's what they want you to know of that. If you're a little bit smarter, they teach you about a sentence. If you're a little smarter, they start taking apart words. This is why you see Disney, <laughs> the movies in general, all of them, like I said, it was another one of the Illuminated Brotherhood who made movies in a certain way. Disney, again, another Mason, another one of the Brotherhood, the elitists. There was a very small group that was sent here to put out this propaganda to really get you hooked, and you are. Well, if you know it, that's the best way. It can affect you if you know but most people are very affected. But that's why children's movies start out with the blood. Tomorrowland starts out with the blood and the death and the horror. But they give you a little happy ending at the last five minutes of movie so that you'll go. Right? This is what's done. They did that again on Facebook. After horror, after horror, people stop looking. Then nice, nice, nice. They even have certain colors there because they know exactly how you work. They don't predict how you work anymore. Know that they have trained you since the 1800s, since these mind control genius, like Horace, Horace Mann, came over 
Well, he was born in the United States. He went to Prussia to learn how to instruct you, came back. There were no PhDs here, by the way. All of these things were um, oppression, so German idea. That's why all of the first PhDs were German. That's why you have psychology, all Germans. The head of the major psychological ideas went so mad that after he taught everyone, he uh, killed himself. But it was always meant to control you. Right from the beginning. None of this is random. None of this is accident. And this is how they control you. This is how you've been controlled. Right from the bare, very, very beginning. KKK, know that the Nazi sympathizers were here already. They would have had to be. As soon as the system is meant and set up as supremacists, where some people are more important than others, some people are worth more than others. You were already bought in. Hook, line, and sinker to this filthy idea. Now, we can't blame a specific race. And by the way, contrary to popular belief, Jewish people were helping run the Underground Railway. Jewish people, white people, there are other black people. There's people from all over the world because if you are balanced, you know slavery is wrong. If you want to raise healthy children, you cannot teach them racism. You can't. You don't even have that kind of idea because you wouldn't want your children treated like that. And you just know it. You don't have to be told it. But apparently people need to be spoon-fed now. It's because of this. It's because of this. You've been trained. This class, this class, this class. You will think this for exactly this long. And they know. They know exactly how much to flash you. They know what colors to use. Facebook generally uses blue and white. The opposite of that is black, obviously, and red, which means blood. So the blue and white is saying this is safe, this is kind, this is a fun place to be. When we talk about these things, know that they absolutely know. We have Albert Pike, of course, Freemason, born in Boston, studied at Harvard, Scottish Reich, one of the Illuminates, went over to Germany to learn this. They called him a Satanist, but it has nothing really to do with Lucifer. It has to do for working with the elites, with the royals. It's to do whatever the king says. Period. So he set up the KKK. He was one of the people to give you the Confederate flag. The Confederate flag that was taken away until 1961 brought back because black people were getting uppity again in the United States. Yes, kids. This is not about heritage. It is about hate. Now I realize there's a few of us that aren't buying it. Maybe there's enough. Because you can tell on the street, you know, the people that are still strong in their force, if you want to call it that. You can tell. Things will happen all around them, but not there. There's more and more pockets like this, and there has to be, of course. Because people are slowly losing their minds. Maybe not so slowly anymore but this was always about dumbing you down this was always about getting you to do 
what they want you to do. It's not an accident. It's why every school is built like that. Everything in the world, education system, this was what was given to the world. And it worked so well in World War II that it totally it totally worked for the Germans. They were predicted. They were controlled. And they were slaughtered. When they didn't have to be slaughtered. The Russians, of course, took this as well, trained their people the same way, did things like, I don't know, attacked one village who is, had no weapons. It's mostly women and children. Chased them onto a river and shot them. This is what your control has done. This is how it's made people brutal. So after the defeat of the Prussians, Germans, by Napoleon, at the Battle of Jena, 1806, it was decided that the reason why the battle was lost was that the Prussian soldiers were thinking for themselves on a battlefield instead of following orders. The Prussian philosopher Johann Gottlieb Fichte, Fichte, I think that's how you say it, described by many as a philosopher, a transcendentalist, an idealist, wrote addresses to the German nation around 1808, which promoted this state as an necessary instrument of social and moral progress. He taught the University of Berlin to 1814 his concept of state and ultimate moral nature of society directly influenced everything to follow. Using basic philosophical um, prescribing the duties of the state combined with John Locke's view 1690 that children are a blank slate and lessons from Rousseau on how to write on that slate Prussia established a three tiered educational system that was considered scientific in nature huge mind control not the first, of course, but big. Work began in 1807, and the system was in place in 1819. An important part of the Prussian system was it decided for the child what was to be learned, how it was to be, how it was to actually think, what it was supposed to think about, how long it was going to think, and when the child was to immediately start thinking of something else. Basically, a system of complete, utter thought control. The education system divided into three groups. The elite, comprising a 0.5% of society. Approximately 5.5% of the remaining children were sent to what was called real children where they were partially taught to think, they remained 94% to Volksschulden, where they were to learn harmony, obedience, freedom from stressful thinking, and how to follow orders. An important part of this new system was to break the link between reading and the young child. Because a child who reads too well becomes knowledgeable, independent from the system of instruction, and is incapable of finding out things. In order to have an efficient policy-making class and a subclass beneath it, you've got to remove the power of most people to make anything out of any available information. That's why the majority of people who read you read the headline and have no idea what else is in there. Nor do they actually 
try to dissect it. Nor would it be possible for them to understand it anyway. This was the plan. This is what was spread throughout the world to keep most of a child, most of the children in all general populations from reading for the first six or seven years of their lives. So that 0.5% of the global population would even be able to think. Now, Prussian system of reading was originally a system whereby whole sentences, thus whole integrated concepts, were memorized. This is learning by rote, rather than whole words. Thus, this three-tier system, they figured out a way to achieve the desired results. The low category of the system, Volksschulden, the method was to divide whole ideas which simultaneously integrate whole disciplines, math, science, language, art, etc., into subjects which hardly existed prior to that time. The subjects were further divided into units requiring periods of time during the day. With appropriate variation, no one would really know what was happening in the entire world. It was inherently one of the most brilliant methods of knowledge, knowledge suppression, that had ever existed. They also replaced the alphabet system of teaching with the teaching of sounds, hooked on phonics. That's where this comes from. Children could read without understanding what they were reading. Or any of the implications thereof. So, 1814, the first American, Edward Everett, goes to Prussia, gets a PhD. He eventually becomes governor of Massachusetts during the next 30 years or so. A whole line of American dignitaries came to Ger Germany to earn degrees, which is a German invention. Horace Mann, of course, instrumental in development of educational system in America among them. Those who earned degrees in German came back to the United States, staffed all the major universities. 1850, Massachusetts and New York utilized that system, as well as promote the concept of the state as father of the child. Horace Mann's sister, Elizabeth Peabody, so this is the Peabody Foundation, you guys have probably heard that, saw to it that after the Civil War, the Prussian system, taught already in northern states, was integrated into the conquered South. Most of the compulsory schooling laws designed to implement the system were passed by 1900. By 1900, all the PhDs in the United States were trained in Prussia. This project also meant that one-room schoolhouses had to go. It fostered independence, so that's why they were wiped out completely. One of the reasons that the self-appointed elite brought back the Prussian system to the United States was to ensure non-thinking workforce to staff the growing industrial revolution. In 1776, for example, about 85% of the citizens were reasonably educated, had independent livelihoods. They didn't need to work for anyone. By 1840, the ratio was still about 70%. The attitude of learn and then strike out on your own had to be broken. The Prussian system was how they did that. And one of the prime importers of this German educational system was William T. Harris from St. Louis. He brought the German system in, set the purpose of the schools to alienate children 
from parental influence, especially that of a religion, since religion was not working out in the way they had hoped, even though at that point it was the biggest mind control industry on the planet. Now he preached this openly and began creating school staffing programs that were immediately picked up by the new teacher colleges, many of which were underwritten by Rockefeller family. Now remember, Rockefeller family are not just Jews. They are converted German Jews. They are of the elite German Jews who um, orchestrated the burnt offerings of the Second World War. Anyway. And the Carnegies, of course, the Whitney's, the Peabody family, obviously, the University of Chicago, underwritten by Rockefellers. Bottom line here is, we had a literate country. We had most literate countries all over the world. Before the importation of this German educational system, which has westernized the planet, it was designed specifically to dumb down the mass population. It was more, far more literate than it is today. The textbooks of the time make so much illusionary to history, philosophy, mathematics, science, politics, that they are hard to follow today because the people were actually taught to think back then. Now part of this whole paradigm seems to originate from the idea presented once again the New Atlantis by Francis Bacon, 1627. Some people say 1625, but since it probably is only 625, why argue? Eh? So the work described a world research university that scans the planet for babies and talent. MK Ultra. The state then becomes invincible because it is owned well, it owned the university. It becomes impossible to revolt against the state because the state knows everything. A reflection of this principle can be seen today with the suppression of radical and practical technologies in order to preserve state control of life, prevent evolution, independence. The New Atlantis was widely read by German mystics, 19th century. By 1840 in Prussia, there were a lot of world research universities. Again, colleges of learned men mostly white men, mostly very, very rich white men who kept all the knowledge for themselves. So in concept, all over the world, all of them drawing in talent, developing it for the purposes of the state power and stability. So the birth of experimental psychology then started in Germany as well. In the middle of the 19th century, Germany had developed a new concept in sciences, which they termed psychophysics, which argued that people were in fact machines, complex, but machines only. It was the ultimate materialistic extension of science that would parallel the what? Mechanist, Could we say it that way, view of the universe. That was already pretty well established. But this new view of people became more or less institutionalized, first in Germany, and by the 1870s, the field of experimental psychology was born. Da -da -da -da. Okay, we'll continue with this after the break. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Turtle Island News with Tracy Kennedy. So, the Colleges of Learned Men. 
the cross-dressers that be. And they don't even cross-dress right. Cross-dressing men love women, and they're usually super, super nice. They're like men, only fun. Same as transvestites, who are surprisingly like girls, and who, who knew? Okay, moving on. Don't hate women. We're your mothers. We love you. And girls, don't hate men. And don't sneak like, like them and buy their porn. It's rude. Okay, moving on. The main proponent of this new experimental psychology, Germany, was Wilhelm, Wilhelm Wundt. I think I got that one right. Now, this is 1832 to 1920. Now, these years, I'm telling you, huge for this planet. The big change. Because we were not killing each other as much as they wanted us. We were not, we were not taking orders with the verve and the vigor of which they wanted us to slaughter each other, I guess. So, anyway. He today, anyways, wide, widely regarded as the father of this field. He described by um, orthodoxy as having freed this study of the mind from metaphysics and rational philosophy. Oh my god. Now there is a really big occult aspect to everything I'm telling you today, but I'm gonna we're gonna get to it probably a couple of shows. Anyway presumably in favor of irrational philosophy. Now, Wundt obtained his Ph.D. in medicine, again, Germany, and embarked on the study of sensory perception. His most famous work was Contributions to the Theory of Sense Perception. It is described as the first work of experimental psychology. So again, he was studying brain trauma, right? Now he was appointed the chair of philosophy at Leipzig, where he um, instituted a laboratory for systematic experimental study of experience. Now back then, the phrase, get a life, was not in vogue. And evidently, he didn't have much of a experience of his own on getting a life of any kind. Now, in 1873, he began a year-long writing project, which resulted in the principles of psychological, of physiological psychology. So, messing with your head was not enough. I'm thinking they're starting to add the electrodes. No, that's what I'm thinking. It became classic anyway, and supposedly reprinted through six editions over the next 40 years, establishing psychology's claim to be an independent science because it wasn't looked at as a science. It was like hocus pocus. Now, he also wrote on philosophical subjects like logic and ethics. Terrifying. Because I, I stayed up most of the night reading his little twisty bendy stuff and this guy was a freak. So his writings, presumably, yield irrational interpretations of both ideas. And, you know, as of course, I would say the dude was a freak. Let me tell you. <laughs> Woo. Anyway, it is conceivable that his warped freaking view of humanity and the universe contributed to the eventual Nazi panache for experimenting on those they didn't like. And for that thing that was already in the States and Canada and most of the well, most of the world, because you got to remember, this organization here, these elites, were all intermarried, right? And they went forth and took over everything. So, that's why we started experimenting on people. 
Anyway, this produced a very strange experience that they would never forget. American students of Wound, who returned to the United States, became the heads of all the psychological departments at all the major universities, Harvard, Cornwell, University of Pennsylvania, um, and all over Canada, all over the world. You can trace these same guys, these, this same group, around, again, 1880 to 1910, all over the world, taught by the same guys, spread through the world. The psychopath, I mean, these guys are like, whew, I can't, you know, as much as I like to tell you stuff, and I know I, I can get a little edgy on my show, I can't even read some of this stuff these little freakazoids did. Like, weird. But, you know, it kind of, it kind of explains to me how people can look you know that guy who who wrote the sex book and they're saying that that was like so avant-garde and so new but he used to mutilate himself and he died by asphyxiation and self-mutilization at the same time because just when does not choking yourself become not thrilling enough not like I would choke myself but he not only wanted to be choked he wanted to be cut he's a freak what was that guy's name now? It's going to drive me nuts. Um, do you know the ones? Oh my God. He wrote the sex book and and everything. I'm going to think about it because there's a little TV show about it. But I, it's going to drive me nuts now. Um, no, not Carradine. Although Carradine choked himself. No, I, the guy who did the sex book. Not Dr. Spock, the one who got all those pedophiles in. You know who I mean, though, right? He got a bunch of pedophiles to talk about how children like to have sex. Freak. Okay, everybody knows who I'm talking about. We just can't remember his name. So hold that that freakazoid's thought and, and just insert that freakazoid that Tracy's talking about in the following thing. They even had a TV show about it. And he's just freaky, too. Okay, I'm moving on. But that's how guys like this get in here and becomes an expert from being a freak. Anyway, moving on. So this system of educational philosophy, where Wundt trained a guy named um, James Cattell, who on his return to the United States trained over 300 PhDs on this new world view and then killed himself. It says he died by masturbation. how, How does that happen? I'm not even going to go there. But anyway, this system of educational psychology evolved from these crazy you know what all funded by Carnegie of course and Rockefeller and the British government and the United States government now this Wootian system gained control over the educational testing in the United States, especially for soldiers of World War I. So the crap they did over there, they were already doing over here. I just thought it it was closer to World War II. They started using it on soldiers, but unfortunately, we test all their shit on soldiers. eh? But anyway, and it was because soldiers had a tendency to think for themselves and they couldn't have that. They needed you to kill and die when you're told. Smart enough. Okay, so, first wave of immigration, which began after 1848, combined with visibly, well, with the visibility of revelations taking over 
all over Europe because, you know, the elite wanted complete, utter control of everything. And this helped foster uncertainty in the public mind. Laws requiring compulsory schooling were then legislated. I've told you before, they had to take some kids at gunpoint in Canada, especially out in um, Nova Scotia, because people were working on the farms, right? There were times they didn't go. But they forced them to go to school instead of working on the farms with their parents. So this is very Hegelian as in dialectic. So those, we wouldn't want those little tykes to become revolutionaries, would we? Well, that put an end to most of that stuff. So in 1890, Carnegie wrote a series of essays called The Gospel of Wrath, in which he claimed that the capitalistic free enterprise system was completely dead worldwide, especially the United States. And really, it was, since Carnegie, Rockefeller, and Morgan by then owned, ready? Get ready for this, all of the United States. Oh, yes. It was about 1917 that the Great Red Scare was instituted in the United States in order to set up reactionary movement intended to get the public to accept the idea of compulsory schooling, Prussian compulsory schooling, of course. And then, you know, they knew within two cycles of kids, so 20 years they would know exactly what everyone was going to do at all times. Now, the implication here of this German educational nightmare worldwide met with initial resistance. Carnegie's home in Gary, Indiana, I guess, um, the system was implemented around 1910-1916, mostly through the efforts of William Wirt, the school superintendent. It involved no academic endeavor whatsoever. It also worked well, so well in supplying willing workers for the steel mills because they were trying to make steel workers and that's what they made. So it was decided by Carnegie to bring the system to New York. 1917, they initiated a program in New York, 12 schools, with the objective of enlarging the program to 100 schools and eventually all the schools. William Wirt came to supervise the transition. Now, unfortunately for Carnegie, the population of the 12 schools were predominantly Jewish immigrants who innately recognized what was being done and the nature of this new educational system. See, the ones that didn't come over here were the ones that were going to be burnt to death if they had a state in Germany. And remember when the racism was really started to gain prevalence worldwide. The Jews and black people were kind of lumped together in one big group. So it's really hard to tell who was being talked about one time. So we have to be careful on that anyway. Anyway. Three weeks of riots followed. Editorials in the New York Times were very critical of this new plan. Over 200 Jewish school children were actually thrown in jail. The kids. They took the kids to jail. Not the parents, the kids. The whole political structure of New York that had tried this scheme were then thrown out of the office during the next election. Now, a book describing this, called The Great School Wars, Wars. now remember, that word came from the German, um, instead of spelling it our way, it was S-H-U-L-E, which means something to produce, I think. A product of 
the ruler or for the ruler, something like that. I'll get the exact translation. But anyway, curiously, William Moore was committed. Oh, this is this is said freakazoid to his sane asylum. After going around making public speeches and playing wackadoodle-doo on his um, personal instrument in front of people. <laughs> and yeah, he went stark rave mad. They're saying two years later. I thought it was two weeks later. Either way. So in order to make sure the independence of the one-room schoolhouse and the panache for communities to hire their own independent teachers. They needed to make this stop because that's what people were doing. People were banding together, all different colors, and saying, we are going to pick the teachers and we want all our kids to learn together. That had to be stopped. So the process needed to be controlled by teaching colleges under Carnegie, under Rockefeller control. No one knew. The communist revolutions were funded by the United States. The build-up of the Soviet Union as well as that of Nazi Germany would also be funded by the United States in order to get a reactionary public to bend to the will of the controlling political factions already owned and operated by said wackadoodle congress. Now, it was a plan that worked so freaking well in the 20s and worked well again in the 50s and the psychological creation of the Cold War providing for funding for build-up of military, industrial, pharmaceutical complex, the new and improved non-thinking people of the planet, Americans, but of course it, not just here, uh, public, never suspected of freaking things. This is hardly ever talked about, but no, this is why the first two wars this is what happened after. This is why... This is what's going on. Anyway, such a thing would have been unbelievable before this. Now, because the United States was then owned and operated by a couple wealthy businessmen, a synthetic free enterprise system was created and antitrust laws were passed to prevent anyone else anyone knew from gaining power. Not possible in the United States, not since the 20s. Everything that had already been consolidated was grandfathered out of the law. You know what I mean? Brilliant scheme. And it worked. And people don't talk about it. Now, earlier in the century, there were school boards in every town. Between 1932 and 1960, there were a number of school boards actually dropped from 14, well, 140,000 to 30,000. Today, there's about 1,500. All controlled by extensions of the Carnegie Rockefeller Educational Complex. By 59, with the advert of um, Sputnik and the public realization that another country was ahead of us, sort of thing, the embarrassed educational system was forced to temporarily create a synthetic focus on science, which produced a generation of scientists and technicians in order to resolve an apparent deficiency in the public mind, although those guys couldn't do anything like the guys who just sent up another friggin' rocket after we got a solar flare. Now, please add this to the list of idiots Tracy needs to call. <laughs> because after the sun has five solar flares in a row, and we are under a radiation storm already, the planet will throw up her shields, do not send heavy metal objects 
based on combustion into that air. Just saying, somebody remind me to call. Because I found another moronic field and some more moronic particles. And I have to get back to CERN because it's ridiculous. Okay, so in retrospect, 1889, the U.S. Commissioner for Education assured a prominent railroad man, Huntington, which we've meant mentioned before, when he protested that the schools seemed to be over-educating people, too many engineers, too many people who could think that schools had been scientifically designed to over-educate. It was a reference to the German system of education then indoctrinated between 1806-1819. Anyway, too many smart people. But don't worry, it's not a problem now. So, this is how it started. It's why it started. Brainwashing kids. And Horace Mann, by the way, the schools that he set up, huge pedophile rings, each and every one of them. And it seems that every one of these schools that were first set up, these were prep schools, basically. Everywhere, every kind of his, even the prep schools, the ones for the elite, know that those people are probably even more mind-controlled for you than you. They have to be taught to think, but they have to be taught to think in a certain way to get them to be sad, cross-dressing pedophiles, but hate women to do it. Anyway. these schools these ideas and we can't blame them so much you know it's what we were saying on the weekend if we were born psychopaths like really crazy really nasty capable of doing all of the things that they say we just do naturally. Children would not be born helpless. There would be no man who wanted to stay with you after you had sex the one time. There would be no parenting. There would be no one would, who would want to par parent. To have the baby give it up. And it's getting very close now. Now, you know, men are targeted one way, women are targeted another. But the yuga of the male dominance, the negative male dominance, women only have one role in this. You can be mother or you can be whore. These are your choices. I know it sounds pretty old-fashioned, but realize this is a very, very freaking old-fashioned thing. This is why you seem more booty shaken now than you've ever seen. Don't turn the TV on. You have a heart attack and die. That's why the gratuitous sex. We are just playthings, and they want us to be playthings only for money. All we could want is money few of us go to school and I realize there's some of us that bypass all of these things but know that it is not natural it can't be we're fighting for our lives here you know what I mean fighting for a way to even exist in this system other be than being breeders 
women really have no role in this. Toys or beaters. But you go from slave, getting the rod only, to serf. This is worldwide, this is everywhere, this is how it's done. The difference between a slave and a serf, a serf does not know they are still slaves. They think there's a chance, but it's still a hierarchy. Some of the serfs think that they are better, they are higher up than other serfs. But you're not. You're all the same serf. It's true. So how do we understand? It's really hard, you know, to realize all of this stuff that we're experiencing now goes back to the defeat of the Prussian army, 1806. All over the world. We had a pretty good educational system, you know. It could be obtained without government interference, without oversight. Surprisingly, 1776, again, 50% of a population of 3 million were indentured servants. Already. Very big. Half of the United States were indentured servants. 20% were African slaves. But indentured servants are, are slaves. It's just another name. And this is the hier hierarchy, of course, because they don't want to say there's white people as slaves. But there were white people as slaves. Serbs, Croatians, Irish, Scottish, everybody, okay? Everyone's been a slave. Now, during that time, though, there were 600,000 copies of Thomas Paine's Common Sense, sold in the United States, read by countless Americans, in 1812, with a population of approximately 7 million Pierre Dupont, familiar name we've talked about, wrote Education in the United States that out of every thousand person, fewer than four, four people couldn't read, couldn't do numbers. They wrote things a little differently. But out of a thousand, only four could not read. He said and attributed this fact to a traditional dinner table debates that everyone used to do. And even reading passages from the Bible. We used to read to each other at the dinner table. You know when we used to have dinner together, you remember that? Have dinner together and then we'd sit and talk after and read to each other. So in other words, children learned how to read with an understanding of what they were reading and they knew their numbers because we did this at home all this education took place at home one room schools or something called dame schools primarily taught by women now the children who came out of these schools were self-reliant individuals smart in marked contrast to what happened next. We were not obedient. We were not collectiveness. We had no national identity. Not anywhere. Not in the way or like go Team America or go Team Canada. Or, you know what I mean. It wasn't like that. This is a new concept. Now another development added to the growing fervor, revolutions, especially in America, again, commonly known as the PhD. PhDs were never here, in Canada, not in the United States, not anywhere. This was a German-only thing. 
That's why everything that came over here was, for the most part, German. German idea. The same thing that was used against the German people. And because it worked so well, it was used for everyone. We go from a very largely, and they counted the slaves and the serfs in this population. Almost everyone could read. We don't have these kind of percentages or numbers now. Probably in the most of the world. Even children going to school can't read. Bizarre, right? Absolutely bizarre. Now, in 41, preparing for uh, World War II, I guess, 18 million men between 1941 and 1944 said 96 of those men were literate. Now, remember, war's war, and it's usually poor men that go. During the same time, African Americans were tested, the majority of whom only had three years of schooling. Do you want to hear something mind blowing? 80% were literate. By literate, I mean that Americans, black, white, could read with understanding. And again, three years. Three years. And they're not saying the date of supposed white men, how long they went to school, but I don't think they went that long. Now, during the Korean War, Department of Defense tested three million men for service. And only 19% were found to be literate. So in less than 10 years... There had been a 500% rise in illiteracy in 10 years because of this. Looking further into it, found that the same test had been used during the two wars. And the only difference was that men and women tested during this Korean War had more schooling and even spent more money on it. So the more schooling, that's what they had. That was the big difference. In 10 years, people went to school longer, had more education, and illiteracy rose 500%. So, jump another 20 years in the future. I hope this isn't boring you to death. I just thought it was kind of odd things that I didn't know. Now consider, 20 years later, around 70, the same test was used at the time of New War. Among Vietnam draftees and enlistees who were tested for literacy, only 27% were found to be capable of reading with understanding even the material they needed in order to serve in the armed forces. Again, major difference between American soldiers in the 40s and in the 70s was more schooling for the latter group at a higher cost to the taxpayer and it made people even slower. And not only couldn't they read, if they could read, they had no idea what they were reading. They couldn't understand it. So consider billions, billions of your monies spent over a period of time from the 40s to the present by some 350% with total, totally unacceptable results, despite a huge increased spending. In 1996, statistics prepared by the National Association for Education for Progress showed that 
some 44% of African Americans can't read. The same set of stats shows a literacy among white peoples too. Actually, it's quadrupled for, for white people. Although, I don't know at what point you're white. So, you know, I have to look into that. But anyway, I think it's incredible that education in Americans especially continues to cost massive amounts of dollar, no? To make people unable to think for themselves. Unless, of course, this was the plan. So again, three years of schooling, ten years of schooling, reading, not reading. Now the cost to America can be measured in just dollars and cents here. And insert your country's name in here, because it's this worldwide now. The cost is monumental. Billions more are spent by local communities, billions of dollars by departments of education for no results. Paying billions of dollars to maintain a system that sounds ineffective and sounds dangerous. It's not teaching people critical intelligence skills, which are crucial for making any kind of economic or political decision for themselves. Unless it was meant for something completely different. Absolutely to dumb you down. Absolutely to make you stupid. So that you would be good soldiers and nothing else. So, this German mind control system that is spread through the entire planet. Completely made for one purpose and one purpose only. To make you obey orders. And they change it up every few years when the king or queen or tribal leader, or tribal ruler, or the person wearing the regalia the regalia made very expensive one time only wear clothes isn't it odd that we in our powwow call the same outfits regalia too when they went forth and changed the world they brought certain words, words with them did they not so changing us to be serfs And it looks like pretty well all over the world. Surprisingly enough, when we're left alone, we are still pretty good people. We are still nice. We help each other. Because this is just a balanced way to be. We are not racist a-holes in general. The tier system puts us against each other. If the racist war comes out now, we've lost. We have. That's it. It's over. I think. And it may just, it feels sometimes like there's too few of us. I know that. I get that, guys. But I don't think so. I'm surprised sometimes, you know, about the number of people I hear listening to me because you guys are leaving me messages and stuff and that's awesome. I, I really love it. It's nice to get the feedback. To know that you hear me. And if you're listening to me it shows that you're working. You're trying to do a little bit more than just regurgitate data. 
to repeat the talking points that everyone's going to tell you if I hear Jade Helm one more frickin' time. Yeah, it's obvious what it is. Master the human realm. Well, you know what? The United States was bought in the 19... Uh, was it 1819? 1919? It was done. Canada was done these things were done. The human realm has been mastered. We are sitting in a bio our geosphere, our biosphere is decaying rapidly. The only way we can do it is fixing ourselves. They have conquered the human realm. If you think you are weak knowing that we were not like this that it only took three years to get far more knowledge than we can now kids go to go to what nursery school primary school high school and they leave understanding nothing they can't even speak in a full sentence lol We need short forms because thought thought is that is new that is rare you can tell when you hear people regurgitating something that they have no con contemplation they can't understand they can't understand the days of philosopher kings, philosopher queens, sages, wide councils. I don't know if that ever existed. Know that you cannot be a king or a leader without being absolutely ruthless. But you don't have to be. You really don't have to be. I'm hearing more and more people saying they're going to go out in there marching on the streets. Don't. Most likely if you go out and march on the streets, they know you're going. They want you to go. They want you to be angry. They want you to do certain things. And most likely you're doing them. Because they have trained us. They've trained us for a very long time and it's generational to react in certain ways. choosing not to knowing that there are certain things out there that are trying to just control you gives you a power you won't believe it really does really watching what you're looking at changes everything you know We look all over the world. Planes are falling from the sky now. Apparently they can't keep a plane in the air in Winnipeg. I don't understand what's freaking going on there. Whether they are just now harvesting our souls. Like seriously, I looked at Winnipeg, Winnipedia, you know that one? They're just... They've taken off the ban of something. You know, because you used to get like kind of half baked info. No, they're coming all out. They don't care. I think they don't think we're, there's enough of us to be able to read, let alone discern and look up things and know to turn back and look up. What awaits us now, do you think? What awaits us? If we keep this going along this track, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we can back out of this thing. I really don't, you know. I know that I'm definitely trying for myself. 
and to share the little bits and pieces that I get with you guys, my friends. And maybe we'll just get bragging rights. I'm serious. We step off this off this planet into the next thing and go through the cube or the circle or whatever the heck we do. And, you know, we get bragging rights saying, look, I went to this realm and they split me in half and I had this, like, good son and this bad son and they were both fighting over me and and then I was like two people and then I became physical and I figured sat down here and one guy's tell me one thing and another guy's tell me another thing and I forgot where I was and they give you no memory and they spend all this time making you crazy and do we even know we're on planet earth I'm really thinking about that lately. It really bugs me. <laughs> but if we're not even on Earth, that would really take me off. We don't know where we are. Can we trust them? Because I'm really feeling not so trusty right now. Tonight, though, something cool is happening. Jupiter and Venus. I don't know if you saw the moon last night, but it was like freaking humongous. A great big, huge red moon anyway it's going to merge into a superstar on the western horizon um, tonight this conjunction of the two planets has been building all month accumulate spectacular display tonight although every night in June the separation between Venus and Jupiter was shrinking a conjunctional is when they appear almost to be one. So tonight, Venus and Jupiter will appear joined in the sky. Just about a third of a degree apart. Less than a diameter. Less than the full moon, basically. So you'll be able to hide the pair not just with the palm of your outstretched hand, but by your little finger. This hasn't been seen in 2,000 years. What happens tonight may be the star of Bethlehem. Could be that big shiny thing that they saw in the sky and wonder what the heck. So that's tonight. I thought that was pretty cool. Kind of excited about that. Not feeling end of the worldy. I'm sure somebody today is going to say it's going to be the end of the world and Jesus is going to come back. Okay. <laughs> Fine. But no, they wrote this stuff around 600 years ago. All of it. And as the world is trying to make homelessness illegal and SpaceX can't get it up anymore and keeps crashy banging. We're here together. And I don't think it's all that bad, you know. It's certainly strange. Certainly creepy. But I'm relatively enjoying myself on this bumpy, bumpy ride. Oh, and I was told to remind everyone, listener supported, all of us, and we love you. No, you're not billionaires, because you wouldn't give me five cents if you were. <laughs> End of the month stuff. <laughs> when we see all the different ways they've controlled us, lie to us. <laughs> It's funny. It starts to get really funny. It's like, I just sit here and go, really? There's something else? You've done something else? The fact that any of us can even have an entire conversation? Pretty incredible. It may not be um, an eloquent conversation. I, I understand that. <laughs> I realize sometimes with me it is not the most eloquent, but considering how bad it could be.
with all of the things I look up, and I'm still tracking the possible inner earth, Shambhala, humanoids, know that we have been influenced by so many things. An alien has just, it's just foreign now, because we are not told how to think.